Well, hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing better than I've been doing. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to just get in here and just throw a quick video together. Now, um, the, the purpose to this video, and this video is mostly going to be for the second channel, but I'm going to air the first part of it on the main channel so that everyone knows what's been going on and um, also to talk about what's in this box here but the wife and I both came down with COVID three about three weeks ago we both have been in pretty sad shape <laughs> it, uh, it worked on us this time and uh, I won't say it was like the last time I had it uh, this time it was mostly head chest you know plus I have asthma so that really did work on it but the main thing was no energy felt like doing nothing you know taking vitamin C vitamin D zinc this and that but we're pretty much basically uh, over the most part of it uh, we both still have you know some congestion and cough and this and that but you know that's how it goes we've had 25 or 26 people out over the last month just at work with COVID so uh, yeah be careful out there guys uh, we have no idea where we picked it up at we haven't been going anywhere, uh, just working back. And uh, when my wife works at, she's there for days in by herself, uh, for several days, and not that many people in and out. But we're getting better. We'll get over that. Anyway, uh, next thing I wanted to talk about was I got this package the other day, and uh, I really didn't bother getting into it in two hours uh getting a little better here and then the other day i opened it up and as you can see it's got amazon tape on it uh, lord of the rings the rings of power box prime video uh, so i guess i don't know if it's an amazon box or not but this was shipped to me uh a drop ship to me and had no return address other than the Amazon and uh, no note don't know who it uh, was sent from it just showed up and here it is and then when I opened it up started looking at it then that really blew my mind because I really can't figure out who would have uh, <laughs> sent this in so uh, let's open it up and let you take a look what's in it. Okay, and uh, you know, the first thing, we've got this little package here, and inside this package are two packs of uh, carbide inserts. And let's see if there's a uh, thing on it. These are the X002PZBYBX. And these are the same inserts that I use on the mini lathe. I just think mine's a different brand than what these are. But uh, yeah, it's two packs, 10 in each pack, 20 of them of inserts and that is what really blew my mind because you know I've been wanting to get some videos out here in the shop on machining and the uh, lathe restoration and this and that but just haven't been able to get anything done and uh, somebody knew what type of inserts to send me and uh, it came with a spare tool to remove the screw you know, when you go to mount it, that just screws right on. So that was kind of interesting to see that. And I say, I don't know who sent this, but I appreciate it. I really do. Um, 
it's amazing just what you know the way people are and the kindness of the heart to send stuff in got another small box in here And there's two items in here. 400R50-22 and an R8 716 spindle. And as you can see there's another one of them tools, just bigger. they got little Torx heads on them. But yes, this is a spindle. And then you can see it's a R8 tapered 7 16 bolt. And it's got two dogs on it that which are removable. And then inside of the yellow container. We have a 50 millimeter shell mill with uh, indexable carbide inserts in it. And this stuff is brand new. Screw this bolt out. That fits right on there. Grab. And there we go. That's fifty millimeter. Yep, dead on fifty millimeter. Carbide into a shell mill with R8 taper. That's pretty nice. Uh, I've been wanting wanted this for squared up stock in the mill, and uh, that's one gave to me. All right, so we got one more item in here. And this says R8-2 20 UNC. Open this up, and what you see here is a pack of Allen wrenches, and it is a boring bar with an R8 taper spindle, and you got two half inch holes, one in the center, one just offset and you have the uh, hole that comes straight out the side but what this is for is boring holes if you're not familiar with this um, you know you can take a half inch drill bit and drill a hole, it's not really half inch uh, if the drill bit is worn it's going to be under if the drill bit is new and you got any wobble or anything in it, it's going to be bigger than half inch and then you got different size boring bars. There's nine boring bars here. So you can actually uh, put the boring bar in there, set the angle the right way, tighten it down. And as you're boring a hole, you loosen these three screws and you turn this dial to uh, however much you want to take off at a time, like a thousandth or two thousandths or whatever. Tighten it back up and go back to boring. And a lot of times when you use something like this, you need a, uh, a DRO or some kind of way to center this over the already hole that you done drilled. But uh, there's ways around that too without having a DRO. In fact, I have a DRO coming, 
ordered it over a month ago and it's supposed to be here sometime next week but this is uh, another uh, very needed tool here in the shop and that should work on the uh, little mill with no problems and you know again the thing that really gets me is that uh, whoever sent this knew that I needed an R8 taper for the uh, the mill uh, these supposed to uh, this arbor supposed to unscrew from the head and I'm pretty sure this one does also but yeah that's a very nice tool and this several different uh, bowling bars and you see this is brazed carbide on these bowling bars so they ought to last pretty good while and they are protected with some heat shrimp plastic on them and a couple little small stubby ones So very nice, uh, these uh, work out real good on the milling machine. So again, I don't, I don't know who sent this in, but I want to thank you. Uh, very generous, nice gift, will be well used, maybe somebody's trying to tell me that Start getting some videos up on the uh, garage channel. So, that's what I need to do here in the future. Winter time's coming. Uh, several projects that I didn't get done this this summer. One of them was to get the uh, old Master Harris pony back in here and get back to work on it. No time. Just haven't been able to get to it or touch anything on that. I wanted to get back on the. Uh, AM2 transmitter that we started building you know and all this stuff with COVID come up and things got pulled away to this and that but uh, we're gonna sometime over the winter we'll get back on that too you know stuff like that are good winter projects uh, <laughs> during the summertime getting in the shop and doing stuff is hard because you know you got other things got to be do uh, maintenance around the house grass this and that just takes up a lot of time and well you know it you know the whole summer's gone and here it is now September so it's almost out of here but we got a lot of work in the shop to do I got uh, a bunch of stuff that I'm trying to work on I'm working on the uh, YZ 101 doing a uh, alignment video on that that's going to take a uh, couple more weeks to get all that done a little bit of time I got doing it and we'll be uh, getting those videos up. I got several pieces of equipment that I'm going to work on. Uh, one thing is uh, installing some stabilizers in a uh, Swan receiver, a VFO stabilizer. And uh, I got another Drake that I need to uh, work on. I want to do some videos on that. So uh, we'll be getting all that up here and going before long. So uh, a couple of weeks ago I took the mini mill off the bench over there and built its own uh, bench for it to sit on and it's all steel it's just got some plywood backing on the sides just to use the bottom of it as a cabinet to uh, put stuff and uh, like I said I do have a DRO coming for it that I'm going to be installing to it and uh, there's going to be several mods that I'm going to do to this meal. You know, you can say what you want and call it Chinese junk or whatever, but I'm going to be honest with you, like my little mini lathe, I love it. It works great. I finally did get, the, you know, the big lathe to uh, take on some bigger stuff to do, but, you know, I cannot complain. The meal, the lathe does what it exactly it's supposed to do, and it does a good job at it. And yes, I did a lot of modifications to it. Uh, the same thing with the 
little Harbor Freight Chinese milling machine. Uh, yes, they have problems, but there's a way to work around these problems. And uh, one of the things is up here in the top of it, where you got the motor into the spindle. And there's also a transmission that's got plastic gears inside. But one of the problems that I've had is breaking that gear inside. And this is exactly what I'm talking about here. As you can see, uh, these gears got broke completely into. There are several of them there. This one here, you can see the uh, teeth got stripped off of it. Now this is one that was 3D printed, that I 3D printed myself, and it worked okay. But, you can see what happened to Keyway, it sheared out on the inside of it. So, if you don't put it through too hard of a metal, you know, it'll get by, but these 3D printed ones doesn't last as long. I even ordered one off of eBay that somebody supposed to had 3d printed with some better filament it didn't last much longer than what the ones I printed with did and you can see that's another one that uh, this is one of the first ones I 3d printed and I didn't get the NPO right I think I had it like at 70% NPO it didn't last no time these are at 99% NPO so they're pretty solid but what is causing this? What's uh, what's making it break these gears? Like I said these are the original gears, and I've ordered some from I think ten of them from Little Machine Shop. Won't that much like thirteen bucks for ten of them? I believe it was. I have to go back and look. But um, the reason that these are breaking, I'll show you. Okay, so uh, one of the the other issues with this meal is the head. I'll unlock it. And you see how far that fell? Yeah, that causes a big problem, especially if you're using something like a fly cutter. Um, if you got the thing running, you get ready to make a cut, and you go to unlock the uh, head, and it falls down, it crashes that fly cutter right into your work and sacrifices that gear up here. Now, Little Machine Shop has a kit, it's a gas spring that goes down into the, uh, the column and bolts and then attaches to the, uh, the head. And that will stabilize this. It'll pretty much stay wherever you put it at. One of the other problems is when you got this locked down, you dial in your depth of cut, you lock it, you make your cut, this thing's vibrated, moved a lot. When you go to unlock it, this head will drop a few thousandths of an inch, and you didn't know that. So then you go and you dial in ten thousandths or something. You've got that ten thousandths plus however much that head dropped. And then when you lock it down and you go into your part, the fly cutter crashed you know, it crashes right to the work, locks it up, takes your gear out. It's another crazy uh, thing about this, but the gas spring conversion kit will take care of that. In fact, uh, after this video, I'm going to be uploading this video on the second channel, and I'm going to show my quick fix for this, and it does work. Uh, I'm not going to say it's as good as the gas spring, but it will save you some problems until you decide to order that gas. A gas spring kit's about 80 bucks in shipping, so you know, but you can do this mod and I'm going to show after this video uh, over on the other channel. So, another issue that you have with this meal that's got to be addressed is this shaft that goes through here spline and it lines up with the rack on the back of the column here so if I lock the head down 
See how much that handle moves? Now the head's not moving, the head's locked. But that shows you the backlash that's in this uh, drive system here going to the rack. Now there is some backlash in this rod that goes through here because it's got a little union in the middle and there's some play in that union. It's not a whole lot, but it's a little bit. Now I put about, I think it's 10 or 12 thousand shim behind the, the rack which brought it out into the uh, this other shaft and that took a lot of the that took half of it out so I need to uh, pull this rack back out and put another shim in it and see if that will take more of this out but again you know the problem is when you're doing this and uh, you loosen up the head you dial in your depth of cut you lock the head you run across it vibrates when you go and unlock it it's it drops a few thousandths of an inch and then when you dial in your depth of cut and lock it crash the head and that's got to be taken care of and fixed so one of the other problems that's on here is that this whole column moves you can't really see nothing right this minute but I run this down. I'll put this dial in. Okay, this is another mod I did. This is a temporary DRO for the Z axis. So if I bring this down, let's bring it up here at uh, zero. Okay, I got the camera on the uh, dial indicator, and now I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reach. I'm not gonna grab the head. I'm gonna reach back here to the column, and I'm gonna pull. That's about three and a half thousandths. Also, if I take it and I push, that's about two thousandths. If I go through the side and push. About a thousandths and a half. Let me go to the other side. <clears throat> about the same thing. So, this is not a fixed collar machine. It's got a big bolt that runs through it into this bracket here. And you can see the back of the bolt and the nut sticking out here. So you can tilt this column left to right at about 45 degrees. And so the only thing that's holding this column is this big bolt and this big washer. Now, to take care of this, what I plan to do is get have a one inch plate cut. That's going to go in between this mount and the bottom of the mill. And it's going to be about the size of this, this uh, rack here. I think it's like 15 inches. But it's going to stick on out the back even further too. And then I'm going to have some one inch plate cut that's going to come up the back here. And then it's going to be triangles on the side and the triangles coming out the back and then weld all that together. Then the piece that goes at the back, I'm going to bolt the column to it. And that should really take a lot of that play in that column out. Now I won't be able to tilt it back and forth, but I don't care about that. I don't need to tilt it. I need it to be vertical. And if I got something that I need to mill, I can always put, uh, use angle gauges or whatever to get my angle that I need to mill something so that will uh, take care of uh, that that give in that column so anyway guys that's just some of the issues that the uh, little Harbor Freight Mini Mill has uh, you know I've been saying I was going to get a review done on this but just haven't been able to get to it and uh, 
I just want to go ahead and get this video up and uh, let everybody know what's going on and this and that. But I mean, for the money, uh, I use Bridgeport uh, about $2,500 is what I'm seeing. And then you got to drive several hundred miles and have it shipped you know truck back <laughs> so uh you know i got lucky with the uh big mckay blade it was not that far away and i got it at a real good price had to do a lot of work to it uh, but you know one day i'll find a a bigger milling machine if i get lucky and that will replace this one but to the time being this one does just about everything i want to do the only thing you got to remember when you got these little hobby grade meals is that you got to use good tooling. And if you want to be milling steel or stainless or whatever, don't spend money on this stuff. These uh, nitrate coated end mills are okay for aluminum uh, plastic you can do some cast iron with it and some light steel but uh <laughs> no you got to uh i mean i think this box of end mills like 70 dollars 20 pieces if you really want to do some good milling, we're looking at end mills that are 25 30 five dollars a piece and as long as you got good end mills like that, it will do the job. Anyway, guys, just stay tuned. We'll be getting some uh, good electronic videos here coming in the next week or two. Uh, I, like I say, you know, with being sick and even coming out here today and doing this is just about wore me out. <laughs> And uh, I did work this past week. Uh, luckily, I'm, you know, sitting at a computer most of the time. And uh, so it's not as strenuous kind of work, you know. So it's, it's been kind of tough, but yeah. We're getting better every day, and uh, we'll be back full strength for long. Again, I don't know who sent the, uh, the tooling in, but I sure appreciate it. And thank you. And... Uh, Many blessings to you. It sure is going to help out. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end the video here. And we should see you back real soon. If everything goes right, everybody stay good. And uh, if you want to see the rest of this video, it'll be on the other channel. Uh, links down below. And uh, we'll see you then. Bye now.